Ciao guys, Vincent van Genechten here. Um, I wanted to thank you guys for uh, watching my YouTube videos. Um, it's been... Uh, they've been watched more, many more times than I, than I would have imagined. So um, I'm here doing one again, uh, a short one, um, on what happened on the uh, ending of the Mercato. Uh, of course with Witzel, with Quadrado, and I also wanted to talk to, to you guys a bit about Lichtsteiner, the, situa the situation, and a small bit about the Azzurri. So let's start with the Mercato ending. It was a bittersweet ending for uh, Juve. Um, they've had an amazing summer. They would get a 9 out of, out of 10 uh, for their Mercato uh, with Higuain, with Pjanic. Um, they weakened their their uh, biggest rivals for the Scudetto, meaning Napoli and Roma. Um, it was a sign that Juve are back, especially with the Higuain uh, move. Um, they showed Europe that the, the old lady is back roaring, also financially. Um, so they're able to compete with anyone, almost anyone uh, in Europe uh, when it comes to transfers. Um, Pjanic, we're, we're uh, yet to see Pjanic in his Serie A game, um, but he will be fine, he'll be very good, So uh, especially if he's, if he's played as a regista, uh, which is Allegri's plan. So um, Then the other is also Benatia, Piaccia, Dani Alves, of course, very good signings. Um, they did add Juan Cuadrado um, on the last day um, of the summer. I've said already that um, I'm not sure how Quadrado fits in uh, when you have Alves and still indeed have Lichtsteiner um, in the 352 he is he can he can be played of course he played uh, a lot last season as the attacking winger on the right side um, with Sandro Alexandro on the left um, but I'm not sure he's gonna play very much uh, I believe it's a move for the Champions League by uh, Allegri because he should and I believe he will play a four-man uh, defense in the Champions League which would then translate in midfield and attack in a 4-3-3 or a 4-3-1-2 or a 4-3-2-1 maybe even a 4-2-3-3-1 I'm not sure um, but then it's could, uh, Quadrado could be very valuable as, a, as the second winger um, maybe with Piaccia on the other side, so um, I get the move, it's a solid move 5 million loan, plus a ob obligation to buy for 20 million I believe Quadrado is worth that so, uh, and it gives us, it, it gives you a, a, an insurance for if uh, Domenico Berardi doesn't want to join us again last, next summer um, for the record I believe he will but it's a uh, it's a, it's a decent, very good deal for Juve. So Quadrado loves Juventus, so uh, we love guys that love the club. So um, Then, of course, the Witzel drama. Um, it, I was working, um, so uh, I was doing the transfer market for uh, the biggest newspaper in, uh, in Belgium. Um, the online newspaper, um, for the record. And I was waiting for the Witzel news and I even arrived at my work doing the, you know, the Witzel uh, goal celebration. Um, I wasn't mocked because everyone was actually disappointed that he didn't make the the, the big move to Juventus. Um, I don't I don't think there was anybody that was that was happy except for Zenit because they blocked the move while the medicals were done. Uh, the contracts were. S are actually about to be signed. They were they were ready to be signed. Um, Witzel was in Turin. Uh, he spent 13 hours uh, in Turin uh, at the Juventus headquarters. It's really a drama. It's it's disrespectful from Zenit because they allowed Witzel to go, and then in the end they say no. It's really very, very dis disrespectful of them. Um, he will join next summer because he also declared. He went then went back to Belgium and played against Spain. Um, he did declare he was very happy. He wanted to thank Juventus 
that uh, they showed so much uh, um, will to buy him and, and, and to get the deal done. Uh, that it was a shame that the uh, Sydney didn't accept a 25 million offer. So it was 25 million. It was 20, I believe it was 20 million plus 5 million bonuses. So it was actually what Zenit or were, were asking for him. So, uh, but they also said he doesn't have an agreement with Juventus to join them next summer for free. But that is very likely. So uh, I read into that that Witzel will be a Juventus player next summer on a free transfer. And again, I've said it many times, he's a very good quality, decent midfielder that gives Juventus, that adds a lot of power, uh, defensive power, but also uh, um, brains to the Juventus midfield. So um, Then Lichtsteiner. It's a very pity situation because I really like Lichtsteiner. I've told in a previous video that I would pick him over Danny Alves. Um, for some reasons because he's defensively much better in my opinion and offensively he's almost as good as Alves except for the crosses maybe um, he was left out from the Champions League squad um, with Hernanes on on the on one side I get that because uh, Juve have Alves they have Cuadrado now they're going to play like like I said a 4-3-3 so positional wise he's not really needed and Hernanes is on because we didn't get with Cell, so we need an extra midfielder. So I get that, but the man has been a legend, a Juve legend for five years. He's been amazing for the club. He's worked for the club. He's given his heart to the club. Um, I'm not saying he's a Juve legend, legend like a Del Piero or something. Of course, that is not the case. But I feel it's it's a treatment that he doesn't deserve. Um, according to Gazeta. He did ask for a transfer with, to Inter. He did agree with Inter to leave um, Juventus. Um, do I blame him for that? No. I know Inter are Juve's historical, historical, historic big rivals, but I don't actually care about that. I feel that Lichtsteiner deserves playing time. If he asked Juve to leave, it's because he wanted to leave, because he saw he had no playing time. He likes Juventus, he loves Juventus, he's proven it the last five years, so if he wanted to go to Inter, so be it. Um, I feel this treatment is a bit sad for him, because he doesn't deserve it, but football-wise I get it. Also because he, will, he won't be cup tight, so he won't be, he won't be, uh, he will be more interesting for top clubs to buy, because he hasn't, in January, because he hasn't played in the Champions League, just so he can play Champions League for a potential new club so which makes him more valuable to buy in January so business wise football wise I get it but emotional wise it's it's a bit sad to see him uh, being treated in that way so um, but overall Juventus Mercato very well um, I'm looking forward to the season they've played for two one good game one decent game Fiorentina Lazio so uh, with Pjanic still out with Marquiso still out Marquiso is coming Seems to be coming back uh, October, November, so that's very good news. Um, Higuain's still not 100% fit, so um, Juventus are going strong, in my opinion. And they, uh, uh, the next week will be very important with Sassuolo coming up at home, then Sevilla in the Champions League, and then at Inter. Um, so a very big week, and it will show, uh, hopefully Juventus show what they're, what they're made of against those uh, three, three uh, in those very three very very rough games for them um, but I believe they will uh, they will show the world what they're made of something about Italy uh, I didn't saw the first half hour then I zapped I, was, I did see the first I didn't see the first 15 minutes um, then I put it on on Rai here Rai TV and Martial scored with Chiellini uh, making a bad Interception, a story failing to uh, to cover him, and then Berzagli being mad about both. Martial scoring, um, so it actually was a decent performance by the Azzurri. Um, France. They actually had the most chances, in my opinion, um, but France scored three times with, in my opinion, three defensive errors, two by Chiellini. Uh, and one Donnarumma, he made two good saves, but then in, with the third goal, he didn't look very well. 
um, with Kurzawa scoring in his short corner. So, um, but again, he made his debut, he made his history. Donnarumma is the future Italian goalkeeper. So, um, hopefully, he'll join Juve one time <laughs> at one point in his career. But uh, um, it was a decent performance. They lost three-one, but you saw the crowd uh, applauding them. They uh, they went home defeated but proud. So. Um, one remark is that Ventura did play with a, except for Bo Bo for Bonaventura, that he did play with the Euro 2016 starting lineup, um, which was with Parolo, uh, with De Rossi, with Pele at their up front. I like Pele, I like him a lot, but you have Bellotti, you can play. Uh, you had Bernardeschi, you had Rugani, Romagnoli uh, at the back, so. He did sub in a few youngsters, but he also subbed in Montolivo. I was like, what are you doing? He only, he only has two years until the World Cup. Um, they have to play Israel now on Monday, which is a must-win game. It's a hard game. Um, Israel are never easy to play. We saw them against Belgium in the qualifiers for the European Championship. So um, I didn't understand his, squ his squad selection, I didn't understand his lineup selection against France, but um, let's give him the uh, the advantage uh, for, for now, but I hope Ventura did, does make a switch because they're going to play 10, um, they're going to play 10 um, World Cup qualification games and then a, a couple of friendlies, so it's not like they have uh, 30 or 40 games to prepare for the World Cup, so um, time is running out. Um, the generation, the switch of generations, has to be made now. Um, the talent is there, so the coach just has to do it. So Ventura, select those youngsters, Berardi, and uh, others. Um, let's make it happen because the Azzurri, if on top with the best players, they can win the World Cup. So for the Azzurri, for the Juve.